G'day guys, it's Paul from Pauly Man Astro and welcome to another video. So today is probably going to be short and sweet. I'm going to run you through one of my new scripts uh, on or called the Orton Glow. Uh, it's still very much in development. So I'm saying it's build 0.1. It's it's that um, finicky at the moment, but I think it's ready to to show off and, and show you what, what it can do. Um, why did I make it? Well, I was watching a video by uh, Steve at Entering Into Space and he was showing off the effect on some of his wizard nebula data and i thought it was pretty awesome um, he jumped across to photoshop obviously to to do that because uh, it's kind of the de facto tool to run the Orton effect on uh, and i thought well pixel math is super powerful why can't we somewhat emulate this uh, using a script turns out we can so let's dive across and we'll we'll have a look so at the moment it's very much a work in development um, if you want to run the script at the moment, if, if you're brave, um, it's not going to do any damage. It just might occasionally, um, have a hissy fit and, and all it'll do is close. Um, you, all you need to do is go to resources, updates, manage repositories, and down the bottom here, HTTPS, um, polymanastro.photography slash Glow slash that simple kind of like when you were setting up forex palette utility uh, if you put that into your repositories then when you click on resources updates check for updates it should recognize that there is an update there and away it goes uh, if you get that set up then it, it looks like this if you go to the script utilities orton glow this is what it looks like uh, as i've said at the moment it's very much in development but it says, this is a script that provides an environment to create an Orton Glow effect. Simply select your image from the drop-down menu and decide on the blending mode. The opacity slider determines the percentage of the Orton blending, larger values for stronger blending, and vice versa. And then I've given you some good opacity starter values, which for one of them I'm going to break for this very image. And it kind of highlights the idea that this is very much you playing around. At the moment, there is no preview, which is a pain in the backside. I perfectly understand, um, but hopefully in the future, I'll get that set up. Uh, my, my little brain at the moment just can't work out how to get previews working. Um, so hats off to people like Frank at City Astro that, that can do that. Um, but here is one of my images of the running chicken in the... Uh, Holy Man Palette, which is still in development. Um, so all I need to do is select the image, which in this case is called P Palette. And then I need to choose a blur value for the glow effect. Now, if you've used the Orton Glow in Photoshop or, or you've seen Steve do it, basically this is how blurry do you want the 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 image to be that's going to act as the glow. Uh, all this is going to be doing is running with convolution. So if you've ever used convolution, you can change the standard deviation. That's all this is doing. And 25, pretty blurry, uh, but it's kind of a, a good starting value. Uh, it's up to you to play around with that um, and, and see how you feel. But I think 25 works pretty well for, for any of the images that I've been working with. So then you click on duplicate which will create a duplicate image to run the glow on. Uh, at the moment, nothing's happened. It's just sitting there ready to go because the idea is that you will be able to adjust this, this blur value and a preview of this image will show up and show you how that blur is going to look. But like I said, haven't worked out how to do that yet, but it's, it's, it's there for the future. At the moment, it's just a, a stock standard copy of what's here. Okay, then you choose the blending mode. Um, like in Photoshop, it's, it's either the Photoshop screen, soft light, or overlay. Uh, again, when this is in production, hopefully there will be a preview here and you'll be able to change these toggles along with the opacity slider and see how it looks. 
before you actually apply it to the image. At the moment, unfortunately, you've got to run through this, see how it looks. Delete if you don't like, start again. Uh, a bit of a pain, but that's why it's 0 0.1 in development. Uh, I personally, um, for some of my images, have been playing with overlay up to about 70%, and it looks fantastic. So my um, Fighting Dragons of Ara, um, if you saw the community post, was with the overlay mode at 70% opacity, and I think it looks pretty all right. For this image, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll have a play and we'll see which one we like. So why don't we start with screen mode and let's keep it at the stock 50%. I'm gonna break this straight away. Let's start with 50% and see how it looks. So I've already clicked on the duplicate glow here. If I click on apply Orton, you'll see it will blur out that image to the 25 standard deviation. It'll create a copy of the luminance layer of the original image because it's, it's going to do an LRGB at the end, which is what's happening at the moment. I, I think this might be drizzle data, so <laughs> it's running a bit slow, um, but we will see it, it will eventually update in a minute. If you're not running drizzle data, it will happen a lot quicker and um, you'll be able to compare if, if you just click the back, back button uh, once or twice, you'll, you'll be able to compare what the original image looked like compared to what this Orton Glow looks like. So if I close this, and I don't need these, but you can see how blurred 25 is. Then I'll be able to compare the Orton Glow. So let's duplicate this. This was with the screen function at the default, if we remember. So this is with the luminance reapplied to, to get that sharpness back. Because if you've never used the Orton Glow, it does kind of um, make it have a, a, a really nice glow at the expense of some sharpness, which for us as astrophotographers, pr we probably don't like. So I've, I've reapplied a luminance layer to kind of capture that back a bit. Um, so this is what the Orton it's, itself with the screen mode look like at the default of 50% opacity. Um, and this is what the original image looked like. So you can see, hopefully, that it, it does look richer in color and it does look like it's got a bit of a glow. That's exactly what we want. So let's let's rename this screen. So we can compare it in a minute to the other two options. And then let's reopen that script. And we'll try again. So the same image, P palette, same glow. At the moment, the script doesn't rename glows and luminance and so on. So it, if, if you do apply the script again, It'll just use the old glow and the old luminance, which you may or may not mind. Um, but eventually it will actually have a brain and, and realize that if there's already an image in existence, it'll just add a digit to the end or something like that. So let's try soft light and we'll, we'll bump this one up more like 70%. Like I said, that seems to be a good starting value for soft light and overlay that I found for my images anyway. And we'll apply the Orton effect again. And because it's drizzled, it might take a bit of time. Um, but hopefully if you, uh, as I said, if you don't have drizzled data, hopefully it won't take too long and um, you'll, you'll get to nice and quickly compare the results. Um, I've already run this data through, so I kind of know where this is, this is heading. And, and for me, I think for this image, screen works really nicely. Um, but like I said, for my dragon's image, I thought that uh, overlay worked the best. So it, it's not a, a set in stone thing here. I think you, you need to, to try them. Um, and that's where the preview is going to come in nice, hopefully, in the future. And we'll be able to do that. But again, here's the original. So if I duplicate this, I found this was just, for this data, was just too strong. Um, so this is what the Orton effect looked like. Uh, prior to the luminance, and this is what the original looked like. Um, so I think it's it's on the verge of oversaturation. Maybe it's not. Maybe maybe you'll disagree with me. Um, but that's soft light. And if you've ever used Photoshop, then you'll know for the last one that um, overlay is kind of a more extreme version of soft light 
So in fact, this one is going to end up, if I do this at 70% as well, it's going to end up even more saturated compared to uh, the overlay, uh, compared to the soft light rather. Um, so in this case, I think for this image, I, I think it's oversaturating and gone too far for me. Whereas the Dragon's data, I don't know what it was about the Dragon's data compared to this data, but it, it just seemed to to prefer the the overlay, whereas this one prefers the the the, um, the screen. So as you can see, this one is even more saturated than the last one. So we'll call this one overlay. That way we can compare all three and you can either agree or disagree with me that that's what's happening. Um, but this is what the Orton looked like beforehand. So it very much focuses in on the brightest regions of the image. And this is what the original looked like. So if we can compare the three now, you can see that overlay is a more saturated, more vivid, I guess is the word, version of soft light. And the screen is kind of the, the, the least of them. But what I did notice is that this blue is uh, more pronounced in the screen version compared to the others. So they kind of zero in on the central portion here and kind of saturate that. Whereas this one, is very much concentrating on um, the, the kind of faint region. So if, if in this image, I really like the screen function. It's really quite nice uh, compared to the original. So what I'll do now is I'll add the stars back and I'm going to do a Steve at entering into space uh, special here. He loves to use um, two passes to add the stars in. So he creates a mask using uh, AC DNR. Um, so here's the mask that I've, I've set up with that. Um, so if I apply that mask to both of these images in turn here, um, and then run the first set of four X stars. So I, I created four X stars for this, um, just because I, I love the color. And I think most, many, many people do love the color but what this mask is doing if you haven't seen steve's work is it's it's um kind of muting the stars in the brighter regions of the nebula but maintaining them in the in the darker regions so it's it's kind of giving preference to the nebula over the stars which is nice and then what he does is he says okay that's nice but then I'll run a range masks on the brighter stars. So he he just, he pulls in the shadows very much and blurs it out a little bit so that it's just really showing those brightest of brighter stars. Uh, and then he runs that mask with the adding the stars in as well. So it's kind of a two stage process. Um, but what it does is kind of boost those brighter stars a little bit make it a little bit more natural. Um, so I'll do the same thing for this one. And I really like it. Um, if you haven't seen his videos, then definitely jump across um, to his channel. And, and he did this on the Wizard Nebula where he did the Orton effect as well. Um, and, and I really liked it. I thought it was a, a nice little process. Um, so anyway, there's the two images side by side with my um, without the Orton effect and, and the Pauly Man palette. And with the Orton effect and the Polyman palette. Now I haven't played around there with changing the um, the blur factor and changing the, um, the opacity around a little bit to see if I can get the best of the best out of it. Uh, I just thought I'd quickly show you how it worked and, and it's up to you whether you think that it's something that might be uh, useful to you, but I, I think it's pretty cool. I hope you agree. Anyway, thanks for watching.